Welcome back. It's uh, been some rough days lately. Um, running around. Uh, had to uh, take my wife to an appointment. Uh, it started raining and it just quit like an hour ago. Um, so my training site is soaked. I'm not much for rain. Um, we had our annual run for the sun. Uh, bike ride today, motorcycle ride. Um, we go over over 100 miles, between 100 and 150. Um, it's all for charity, for uh, um, Jesus Film Project and, and uh, Open Doors and um, Mission Ventures. But that's not what this is about. So, um, welcome to my indoor crafting table. It's in my shed. It's, you know, it's a like 10 by 12 shed. Um, I am going to start a fire here because um, I'm working on char material kits. So these tins I want to use and have my char material in here. Now what I made before was punk wood. So that's what's in this one. Um, and this is uh, charred cotton, charred cloth. And then this one is a little bit mixture of both. Now this one right here is in my main kit. Um, these are my auxiliary kits. This is actually in a uh, urban kit that, um, so people don't know I char material. But, um, you know, I got Cheetos in there. Basically they're wax chemical treated cotton. Um, which brings me to my next um, thing. Now, you know, I'm a big container guy and I was using headphone cases because my wife goes through headphones like they're going out of style about one every two months. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to um, start charring some material first. Um, but what I did yesterday is I took a bunch of my cotton balls with the uh, Vaseline on them. You've seen me, me use these before. Um, and I made um, no, don't eat these. They're cotton balls dipped in wax. So what I did is I made this little fixture where I can um, take cotton balls soaked in uh, Vaseline and just dip them in. And I'm going to start that up to here too to show you that. Um, I'm going to make a fire. I'm not going to bore you with that, but today is about cordage. Um, we're going to do toggles. I mean, I covered some of cover, um, but not as much as I wanted to because I want to use, you know, with the cordage, I want to make the quick uh, deployment um, ridge line. So we're going to cover that. Um, I need a fire. My cordage is soaked. I left it out there. Um, I need a fire uh, to do that. I could use my lighter, but there's no fun in that. Um, what I'm going to try to do is make a small fire and light some of this on fire. If not, you know, there's, there is the lighter. Um, I'm trying not to use the lighter because this is simulated survival. Um, this being out of the weather, finding an old shed, this is my go-to um, hideout. So <clears throat> this is where I do a lot of my tests and bushcrafting. Well survival stuff um, so the other thing I want to make with cordage is holders for your backpack um, so when you go up to to you know you find a place that you're gonna camp you can find a tree um, wrap a cord around there put a toggle in there and you'll have um, a backpack holder so we're going to go through, you know, some more cordage, some more cargo, and uh, less tarps, less cover, because um, it is raining. Now I can get my poncho out there and, and go out and do it. And I may do that, I may not, depending on how much time I have. Um, so we're going to go from there, and um, I'm going to get some of this stuff. I was going to put the cotton balls in here, but I don't think they're going to fit. Um, 
less and less these containers that I'm bringing out are are working so <clears throat> you know let's get this fire started um, I am going to try to use my ferro rod since that's the the best um, okay <laughs> I think the camera's on since that's the best um, way I can get things started um, I did watch a couple videos on since I can't find that wood that um, <clears throat> this punk wood that I, I um, charred should light with a ferro rod so I'm gonna try to do that I didn't know I found punk wood um, I just happened to be looking at a, a video today and I'm like oh that's what I mean Corporal always talks about punk wood or punky wood. He, you know, some people call it punky wood. Some people call it punk wood. I don't care. Um, it's dried out wood. It's like sponge. So when you, before you char it, it's very, very, actually this piece is not charred. It's very spongy. It's easy to break, um, like, like styrofoam. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to use that and Here's another myth. It's like the military guys are the only ones that know. But you don't have, a poke, have to poke a hole in this to get it to char. I mean, every other little side I watch, these people are, oh, you have to poke a hole in here. Uh, there's one guy that compared it, poking a hole and not poking a hole, and realized that it comes out the hinges. So, hey, if you won't poke a hole in your can, you can. I'm not. So... That's why I don't have a hole in my can. Um, anyway, this is for my main kit, <clears throat> my small kit for my bike, and my, um, actually this is for my urban kit and my small kit for my bike. Um, so I'm gonna get to starting a fire and um, we're gonna use my homemade stove, um, which is basically a 55 gallon drum stood up on its edge. Um, I bought a kit for a 55 gallon drum and made it fit. So it's uh, very kludgy, but hey, it works. And you know, I did it for what I pay for the kit, 40, 50 bucks. So, um, and uh, the piping to go into my chimney was, you know, less than $10. I uh, actually have more tape involved, uh, um, aluminum tape involved <laughs> than I do piping. So, um, like I said, it's kludgy. And also, I'm going to make a stove out of this so I can actually burn, um, heat up anything I want. Uh, mainly I'm doing it to, I've got this uh, bowl, stainless steel bowl that I'm using to melt the wax to make um, these little nuggets here. Um, I actually do want to try this um, with my ferro rod. so. You know, I'm just going to bring this kit with a couple of things and um, we're going to try to make a fire real quick. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. There is one thing I do want to correct and I'll correct that when uh, we uh, go to make a fire. Uh, see you in a bit. All right, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday <laughs> I was trying to use this to start a fire and I was using the blade end when all in reality is just supposed to use the back side. And if you don't have a good edge on your back on the back of your knife, like to hit a ferro rod. Alright, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this. And a little piece of punk wood. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. One of these. My nuggets. Oh my gosh, I can't break it open. I wonder if that's the way it's supposed to be. <clears throat> wow, that's all wax. Look at that. Wax and cotton. I don't know if that's going to char or uh, light, but we're going to see. And as we saw yesterday when I was trying to scrape some of this off, 
That's all you need to do. Okay, there goes the uh, tent peg. Um, I hope this doesn't start yet because what I forgot is to get some uh, sticks. Now everything's wet outside, so I don't know how good this is going to be, but I've got plenty of stuff right here that I could try. Um, I'm going to try to cut up some of this to get it together. This is all the hardwood that's in my shop, so um, let me pause this until I get some more. Uh... So the other thing that I have on me that if I can get a flame going again, since my lighter's over there, where am I packed? bit of tape. Something, one of these things will catch. But you see how, how good a ferro rod once you once you uh, get the right one how easy it is and I'm struggling with those little ones all right this ain't gonna work so packs right here lighters right here battery lighter cargo tape so here's what I'm gonna do to light it since this is cargo, um, part cargo, I mean, I could use parachute cord too if I wanted to. Oops. Goes out easy. I don't like using a lighter during this thing, but I got to do what I got to do to get things going. Let's see if I can get some of this smaller hardwood going. Tell that's not hardwood because it actually is very light. All right, so so this doesn't smoke me out too much. I'm gonna put it in here. So this is what I built. <clears throat> um, Basically, that door goes on there. Poke the hole in the top, poke the hole in the bottom for air, and just basically kept taping it up. There's my bowl that I'm going to use to melt candles. And here's the little tools I made. Um, I don't want them to get hot. There's a bug candle that I always leave on there. But I'm going to get this thing going and we're going to start with some cordage. So I'm going to leave you at that. So using um, the idea that always prepare for your next fire. You see how easy that was to start. You know, um, I'm getting better. Um, I do things the long way on purpose sometimes just to show you the struggles that I had so here's uh, what I want to try I mean I'll obviously I already use punk wood so here's some of the punk wood I'm gonna char that and along inside there I have uh, some denim rolled up so I saw that um, and they say it's better than cotton of course it's civilians um, so you know it, I take everything with a grain of salt whatever I hear military or civilian so I got a pretty good fire going right now um, no coals yet but that would be what it's for all charred look at that and there's charred cloth too now that's denim so we're gonna see how this thing works um, but 
there it is again. So I'm always preparing for my next fire. And all these things I cut off here that'll dry, that's going to go in my fire kits too. Now, I'm going to end today with uh, the rest of my fire kit. So uh, I'll be right back. So, um, got our fire kits together. One of the things I want to add um, is alcohol prep pads. Um, I saw one of the kits, I believe uh, Ranger Andrew had. He had alcohol prep cat. Uh, so I want to add them to my first aid kit anyway. So I'm going to add them to this kit. Now I've got all that charred material in here because this is my next fire. Um, the Altoids can is full. I might have to take it out. But um, this thing, you saw how these things work. So I get an extra one in there. Um, but the other thing I had on these is I had my cargo needles taped inside. But then I realized that I might char them. So um, these kits are well complete again. I could throw some of these back in there if I wanted to. Um, I probably won't. I want to um, leave some room for the lighters and maybe even a knife in here. So these kits are ready. This one's ready to be charred. Um, I'm going to make a stove out of this. And this is going to go on my shelf here or on my, my bench here. Because this is all the stuff I use for material. Like I, I should put some uh, cargo tape in there. Um, I gotta open one of these somewhere. That's inside probably. Oh, here it is. Um, steel wool. It's always good. I ain't gonna go in that one. Maybe it will. Um, steel wool. That's another good fire starter. Um, like I said, you know, build your own, build your own kits. Like I said, I got three of them now. Um, I just, I wanna. I want to make sure that I'm ready anywhere I go. I mean, I'm not even leaving a kid at home anymore. It's all with me all the time, be it on my motorcycle or in my car. You know, most people think I'm crazy anyway. Um, they think I'm paranoid. I don't care. I'm going to prep. I'm going to pre prep for the worst. And uh, one thing about um, my gear, it's geared toward the, towards the military, and, uh, you know, some people say you should change that and have, like, my urban pack. My urban pack is basically, if there's going to be a firefight, that's what I want, is my urban pack. Um, the rest of the, my day pack and three day, it's all military. Um, one of the theories behind that is people tend to stay away from police and military because they're more authority figures and that's what I want to project is don't mess with me um, so it's either going to work or not I mean some people say go incognito some people say show it um, it's what you prefer uh, the other thing um, I talk a lot about not trusting people but unfortunately during the shift you're gonna have to lean on people you know like I'm gonna go over some map um, map and compass but it's not going to be where I'm going to go. I already have my plan on where I'm going, and you guys should too. North, south, east, and west. Um, you shouldn't plan on where I'm going. You should plan on where you're going. So just be aware of that, where you, where you can bug out to. I mean, I'm real close to Washington, D.C., so that's a problem. Obviously, I'm not going to go you know, south or east or north, so maybe west, you know, there's not very many choices. Um, I do have several places I'm going to go in case the shift happens. Um, 
if I run into a community on the way that I can trust, I can help. You know, I know, I know basic survival. I know how to um, find food. I know how to start gardens and run gardens. Um, I'm basically self-sufficient. Um, I am working on my trapping skills. That's why uh, one of these things, I finally got some wire. And then this is 18 gauge wire, so I'm gonna put this in my LBE so I can use it for trapping. Um, that's what my, the, my butt pack is, is basically hunting fishing, you know. Um, I've got a slingshot in there. Um, I'm gonna put this in there, so I'm, I'm gonna be ready with that LBE. Uh, I have kind of moved some stuff around into my pack. I've dumped some stuff, and uh, it's, I got everything ready to go. So the shift happens tomorrow, I'm gone, you know. Um, depending. Um, when it gets too close to uh, people trying to steal from me and kill me and steal from me, I'll be out of here. But anyway, I'm going to let you go for now. God bless. Um, we'll get to uh, the rest of the um, cover to, uh, next time. You know, I covered some of the cordage, some of the uh, uh, cargo.